Hello friends, in this lesson, we will try to find the surface area of some more 3D shapes. But this time, let's take some complicated shapes. Not just simple cylinder or cone or spear. We will take shapes which we see in our real life, which are made of multiple shapes. Like this one. If you see this particular shape, this looks like from a distance like a nice pillar of a beautiful castle. I know you must be laughing, but if you see any of the castles, for example, the Disneyland castle, you will see similar kinds of pillars on its sides. Right? So what is it? If we suppose we need to paint this particular shape, how much paint will be required to paint this this pillar of this beautiful castle we are going to make. We need to find the surface area of this shape. But this shape is neither a cylinder, neither a cone, neither a cube, neither a cuboid. What is it? Don't get worried. Let's find it out. As you can see, this part, let me remove the cap of my beautiful castle. What do we have now? Wow, we have a cylinder here. And what is its cap? Its cap is nothing but a cone. So you must be thinking, wow, to paint it, what is it? I just can sum the surface area of the cylinder and I can sum the surface area of the cone and I can find the total surface area, right? You, that's what you must be thinking. Sorry, it's wrong. You cannot just do the sum. Are you painting here? Are you painting here? Because when you build this shape, you are only painting here. You are only painting here. You are not only painting the base because that is in on the ground. You are not painting this side also thing. So you can't just blindly sum the surface area of a cylinder and cone and find out how much paint will be required. You will calculate way higher amount of paint which is which will just go wasted. So to find the surface area in this particular example where a cone was placed on the cylinder, you cannot sum it blindly the surface area of the cylinder plus surface area of the cone because you are only painting this curved surface and this curved surface. You are not painting this curved surface of the cylinder. You are not painting the base of the cone and neither you are painting the base of this cylinder. So what will be the total surface area? Let's find out. So we were having a small cylinder like this and we placed a cone on top of it. Right? <coughs> so the height of the cylinder is H. Suppose this is the radius which is R and the height of the cone is something else. Say it is H1 and say the height of the cylinder is H2. Just some values because they are not same. You can see this height is more, this height is lesser. So H1 and H2 and the radius of this part and this part are exactly matching. So we call it this one. So what will be the total surface area in this particular example when I place this on top of this? It will be the surface area of the curved surface of the cone which is 2 pi r into h that's what we learned in our earlier lesson 2 pi r into h is the just the surface area of this curved surface of the cone remember we wrapped a paper in our earlier video and we opened it it became a rectangle 2 pi r into h so, so in this case the height of the cylinder is h2 so h2 is the height of the cylinder so this is 2 pi r into h2. This is what it will take to paint this area of the cylinder plus the area of this curved surface of the cone. So what will be the area of this curved surface of the cone? Let's call this as the slanting height, the L of the cone. So we know the area of the curved surface of the cone is pi into r into l. 
where L is the slanting height of the cone. So in this particular example, only this curved surface and this curved surface is visible. So we just sum these two things. So 2 pi r into h2 is the area of this curved surface and pi r l is the area of this curved surface of the cone. So that's all in this example. Bye-bye.